A longtime Ligorian tradition returned to downtown Ligorian with family-friendly rides and games and concluded with a spectacular fireworks display over Fourth of July weekend. Residents were invited to come out to the Orient Center for fun and games during the township's annual Summer Sizzle event. Galling Buick GMC hosted their first car cruise of the season with 150 classic cars and hot rods gathering to support a worthy cause. And the Chamber of Commerce continued to celebrate the grand opening of several new businesses here in the Orient community. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of Owen TV News. Summer is in full swing here in Lake Orion with plenty of concerts, festivals, and other fun activities for families to enjoy. Fourth of July has come and gone, but the party got underway more than a week before with a longtime Lake Orion tradition. The Lake Orion Lions Club's annual jubilee kicked off on Thursday, June 23rd and ran through Sunday, June 26th. The streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic as Skirbeck Entertainment Group returned to set up the rides, games, and food that bring in families from throughout Oakland County. We've been doing using Skurback for, I don't know, 15 years at least, something like that. And uh, they just do a great job for us and everybody does well. Uh, kids have fun. We make some, you know, we make money because of the carnival and getting people downtown. The businesses are successful because they've got a big crowd gathered around their place. And, uh, it, you know, every, it's, it's a win for everybody. A lot of fun. We make a lot of money to help out the community and uh, just, just really enjoy ourselves down here. For more than four decades, the Jubilee acts as the Lion Club's biggest fundraiser of the year. In 2010, the Jubilee was relocated to the grounds of Canterbury Village due to renovations taking place in downtown Lake Orion. The event returns to its original location in 2014 with record crowds, but the Lions Club was forced to cancel the event in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It returned in 2021, but without the beer tent, which was a big source of revenue. In 2022, the beer tent was back with live music and fun activities, allowing the Lions Club to continue its charitable efforts in the community. Of course, uh, um, the Lions Bear Lake Camp up in the Pier area was started by our own Lion Al Casson here in Lake Orion. And when, when they built the subdivision there on Long Lake, they moved that up, up toward the Pier. And, we help blind kids have the same camp adventure that everybody else has in the summer, and uh, I mean they climb rock walls and they have a they have a, uh, a zip line and they shoot bow and arrow. A lot of fun, and we we of course leader dog for the blind, and we help people in the community get glasses that that need some help. And, um, we have scholarships for high school students. We have every year we have another group of scholarships. Just, just a lot of things, either local and other charities that we support locally. For many, the highlight of the weekend was the fireworks show over the lake. Ace Pyro returned to launch the fireworks from a barge anchored between Park Island and Pelton's Point. Families from all over Oakland County began to gather along M24 and the shores of Lake Orion for the best vantage point. Greens Park was packed with families as the sun went down. At precisely 10 p.m., the first firework was launched from the barge. The show lasted approximately 15 minutes and ended with a spectacular finale that had spectators cheering. One week later, residents that live on the shores of Lake Orion took part in another longtime Lake Orion tradition 
In 1945, the local Rotary Club began Flare Night as a celebration of the end of World War II. Decades later, the Lake Orion Lions Club continued the tradition as a fundraiser for the organization. In the weeks leading up to the event, rote flares could be purchased at several local businesses. As the sun set on Friday, July 1st, Lake residents began lighting up their property. The flares stayed lit for approximately 30 minutes and were a pretty spectacular sight. The following day, spectators returned to Lake Orion to find a prime viewing spot for what we'd like to call Fireworks 2.0. Families lined up along M24 and Philip Greens Park and Pelton's Point on the lake. Sponsored by the Lake Warrior Fireworks Foundation, Ace Pyro was back at it, towing a barge out to a safe distance. As the sun went down, the first firework was launched just after 10 p.m. The show ran approximately 25 minutes, thrilling those who came to see one of the best fireworks shows in the state. While the Jubilee was getting underway in downtown Lake Oregon, families were invited to take part in a more recent tradition in another part of town. On the evening of Thursday, June 23rd, Oregon Township hosted its annual Summer Sizzle event on the grounds of the Oregon Center. Oregon area families enjoyed inflatables, games, free hot dogs and refreshments and even a movie. And the always popular Guy Lewis and his Chautauqua Express entertained the crowd with live music. It was free. Everything is free. Free parking, free admission, free hot dogs, free bounce houses, free face painting. Everything is free. That's the best thing about Summer Sizzle is everything is for the families. It's free. How is that possible? How is that possible? Well, through our supporters, which I don't have memorized, but I could list them all off. Um, we have our supporters. We're millage funded, so we use some of our millage dollars. Um, we just make it happen. And the biggest supporter, one of the biggest supporters, is the First Baptist Church. Because they are out here with, they must have 30, 40 volunteers. They're grilling the hot dogs. They're running the carnival games. We could not do it without their support and their volunteers. We've been helping the township even before it was set up like this. We would have our teen youth group come out when they had it at Civic Center Park, and they were providing the hot dogs and the chips and what have you, and we helped run the kids' games. And then Jennifer was saying that they might not be able to do it, and then this might have been five or six years ago, and um, we said if we went ahead and did the food, it ended up being a win-win for us, because we were doing something similar outside our church on the grounds, but it's harder to get people to come that direction. And this was a ready-made venue. So we were more than happy to pitch in with the township, be able to go ahead and uh, help them run the event, provide the food, and try to be a blessing to the community. Summer Sizzle began in 2009 as the brainchild of former township supervisor Matt Gibb in response to the economic hardships residents were facing at the time. Originally, it was held at Civic Center Park, but moved to the Orient Center in 2013. Coincidentally, 2022's Summer Sizzle was held the week of the Orient Center's 10th anniversary, which celebrated its grand opening on June 21st, 2012. It's just part of our mission, bringing families together, having a good time. Look at all these people smiling. Who has a better job than I do right now? Based on the number of hot dogs given out, an estimated 1,000 people attended this year's event. This is crazy. This is families getting out of the house because the weather is beautiful and people are feeling good. They're feeling comfortable to be outside with their families. This is amazing. Next up on the calendar is Orion Township's popular Big Rig gig, scheduled to take place on Friday, August 5th at Friendship Park, beginning at 5 p.m. For more information about upcoming programs and events, visit OrionParks.com. June 23rd was a busy day here in Lake Orion. In addition to the Jubilee and Summer Sizzle, the first of several car cruise events took place to raise money for a worthy cause. On Thursday, June 23rd, approximately 150 cruisers gathered at Galling Butte GNC in Orion Township for the first Galling car cruise of the season. The dealership part partnered with Cruising Media for music, food, and fun. Rocking Ronnie spun the oldies as classic cars, muscle cars, and hot rods came together to raise funds for a worthy cause. 
food sales and a 50-50 raffle benefited the Orient Veterans Memorial and VFW Post 334. We raise money for various charity groups throughout the year. Each show has, has a charity. This, this uh, is the uh, Orion uh, Veterans Memorial down here on Lapeer Road, uh, raising money for that memorial today um, and throughout the year we pick different charities and we try to uh, you know mix it up and, and keep the money in the community I can tell you that last year with our shows we raised almost thirty thousand dollars well that's what we like about being associated with Gowling uh, the, all of their shows are for charity and we try to help spread the word and mention look it's a free show but you know, donations are appreciated and they do a lot of great work they raise thousands of dollars for various local charities throughout the year through their shows so if you want to come out listen to some good music hang around some cool people see some awesome cars get some great food a Gowling show is what you want to be a part of and that's why we like being a part of them as well. You know, it's, it's even hard to say what Golling does for the veterans, but not only the Orient Veterans Memorial, it's the VFW Post 334 that's being honored today, too. So uh, it's a big deal for us to come down here and be a part of this program. They're even supplying the cooks for this food, and they give us all the food. I just can't, can't say enough about them. The cruise was just the first of many scheduled for their 2022 season. On July 16th, the fund moves to Friendship Park to raise funds for Miracle Field, where those with special needs can play ball without obstacles. On July 30th, the streets of downtown Lake Orion will be closed for the annual Kids and Cops Cruise, which benefits the police department's shop with a hero program. And the season comes to an end on September 17th with a Galling Super Cruise at the dealership. Well, I, th I think it, it just kind of plays in the spirit of coming back out after two years of fighting COVID and, and everybody just kind of being cooped up. People want to be here. They want to be a part of this. And, and um, I, I think it's just great for the community. And hopefully uh, we have a, a summer ahead of us with great weather and a lot of participation. I know people are really anxious uh, to be out and they, and they like it. They like being out. Well, and it's summertime, and it's a perfect night, and it's a great night to get out and get in those cars. We have such a short season to enjoy these classic cars, so any chance you get to come out and, and take in a show or, or be a part of a cruise or any kind of event, you need to do that, and this has been a great night and a great turnout so far, and a lot of folks out here having just a great time, and we are as well. It's fun to celebrate when a new business opened its doors here in Lake Orion, but it's also important to acknowledge an existing business when they celebrate a major milestone. On Tuesday, June 21st, Simply Marcella celebrated its 10-year anniversary in downtown Lake Orion. Visitors were encouraged to wear their favorite hat as they shopped at the store before moving over to Wine Social for a sandwich buffet. It's been unbelievable. And you know, my mind's been running through all the things that have happened in 10 years and it's unreal, but it's been actually a great journey for all of us here. Simply Marcella originally celebrated their grand opening in April of 2012 with the ribbon cutting ceremony. Since then, they've been heavily involved in community events, even organizing the annual Babes on Broadway event for a number of years. In late 2019, they moved into a new location just south of their former location on Broadway. I came to Lake Orion. I thought, oh my gosh, can we make it work here in Lake Orion? And we did it. And after six years, our location that was down the road kind of got wrapped up and they are turning it into another place. So then this building grew and we were so grateful and now we're here and we've kept some of the same employees, some new employees, but other than that, our customers have been the same and have been loyal and that's probably the most important part of all of it. Like most businesses, Simply Marcella was severely impacted by COVID-19. Owner Marcella Costin credits the Small Business Administration for helping her weather the storm. They really did help us out when we needed help because that was a very scary time. When your doors are closed, you had employees that didn't have jobs. And for me, a lot of my work is going overseas to do all my designs. So everything had to be changed and rerouted, which it still is. But I'm connected enough with some of my sources overseas that I've been able to build things that way. Um, like I said, the SBA helped us through some of the darkest moments, the state of Michigan. I think we have to give credit to those people who were there for the small businesses when we needed that help. It wasn't easy, but if you were strong enough, you could make it through. Congratulations on reaching your 10-year milestone, and here's to another 10 years. For more information, 
Call 248-814-7400 or visit simplymarcella.com. While some businesses like Simply Marcella celebrate a long relationship with the community, other businesses are opening their doors for the very first time, and the Chamber of Commerce is always there to welcome them. On Thursday, June 23rd, representatives of the Chamber were joined by family and friends to celebrate the official grand opening of Cakes Dreamer Supplies on M24. really appreciate them so uh, they welcome me in their area in a great community in here so I hope this cake this cake supply can help other bakers too to get some stuff they don't have to travel so far away to get some stuff. Owner Weider Wong has been a cake decorator for more than a decade but recently realized she had difficulty finding a cake supplier in this area. She decided to meet the need herself and open Cakes Dreamer Supplies in May. We uh, offer like we can help them, the home baker to grow more like easily to get some stuff too. Like we offer them to have a cookie class to the cake decorating too. Yes, to help the little kids and then the kids to have a patient for the cookie to our the cakes too. Yeah. For more information, you can call 248-946-6471 or visit cakedreamer.com. You can also find them on Facebook. Two weeks later, the chamber was added again, but this time they were celebrating one of their own. On Thursday, July 7th, a crowd gathered at Harvest Time Farm Market on the Pier Road near the border of Oxford and Lake Orion. Now, Harvest Time has been serving the Oxford Orion community since 1983, but they were hosting the official grain opening of a relatively new business, your Food Dude, a food truck owned by Matt Shadare and Garrett Hoffman, who also happens to be the Chamber Board's president. One, two, three. It feels great. It, it uh, definitely feels good because I've been supporting everyone else's businesses and that they, you know, return in the love and show that they, uh, they appreciate my support by supporting me. Uh, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for all your support. It, it means a lot to us. Matt and Garrett came up with the idea of starting their own food truck while attending the Chamber's Food Truck Festival in June of 2021. By August of 2021, they were licensed and up and running with Your Food Dude, offering primarily a Mexican menu. It's pretty tough because you want to try to get a menu that that's everyone will like, kids, family, um, but yeah, it was tough, but, but we did it. In addition to starting their own business, they also worked with the township to draft a food truck ordinance that benefits operators as well as customers. Uh, Orient Township, like many other townships and villages and cities, are coming up with ordinance to keep the uh, food truck owners and citizens safe. Um, with the fire departments doing safety of the trucks, just like they would do in a brick and mortar restaurant. Okay. And um, so, so they we were coming up with the ordinance and we got involved because there were some things that was either already being handled by the uh, health, health department or there was other things that wasn't necessary. So we helped them pinpoint um, strictly onto the safety portion and build their process. To book your food dude for private parties or events, you can call 855-64-TACOS or you can visit yourfooddude.com. You can also find them on Facebook. And finally, with Lake Orion being so close to the Modi City, there are plenty of opportunities to see spectacular cars from the past and present. Recently, Owen TV's Joe Johnson discovered a collection of cars that just might rank among the most impressive in the nation. In 1990, Detroit area businessman Ted Stahl purchased the 1930 Ford Model A Roadster Deluxe and got to work restoring it for exhibition. That's where his obsession with classic cars began. Over time, the collection grew, and in 2006, he founded the Stahl's Automotive Collection in St. Clair Shores. As the collection outgrew that facility, it moved to a 38,000-square-foot building in Chesterfield, Michigan in 2011. Today, the Stahl's Automotive Collection is comprised of approximately 200 cars, with about 100 on display at any given moment.
Among the incredible collection are several cars that have appeared on the silver screen. Not only is this 1948 Tucker one of the 47 surviving originals, known as number 1015, but it also appeared in the 1988 film Tucker, the Man in His Dream, starring Jeff Bridges. Uh, we have a 1948 Tucker. It was one of the cars that was filmed or uh, used in the filming of the movie. Um, we didn't own it at the time. It was owned by um, the Protzman brothers. It, they were down in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Okay. And um, we do have a signed um, autographed picture from Jeff Bridges that is actually signed to Tommy Protzman. Also on display is the Winton Flyer from the 1969 film The Reaver, starring Steve McQueen. The car was created by Von Dutch, especially for the film, to look like a typical 1904 car. After filming was complete, McQueen took ownership of the car, and it remained in his collection until his death in 1980. In 2021, the museum brought the car to the inaugural Woodward Dream Show event at the M1 Concourse in Pontiac. That was a uh, lesser-known Steve McQueen movie. When we tell people we have a Steve McQueen car, right away they think we have Bullet. And no, we have the Reavers car, which um, if you watch the movie, it's a little risque, but it's, it's a fun movie. And um, from what we've read on it, uh, Steve McQueen fell in love with the car. Um, he, and, he assisted Von Dutch in building this car. And um, he felt that the car was actually the star of the movie and it's the only one that was built for the movie and he purchased it after the filming was done and kept it in his collection till he passed another period film 1965's the great race starred tony curtis and jack lemon as rivals competing in a car race from new york to paris curtis drove the beautiful leslie special while lemon as professor fate drove the sinister hannibal eight they actually built four of the Hannibal and five of the Great Leslie. Um, some of them were filmed or were created with more of an electric engine so that when they filmed indoors, they didn't have to worry about exhaust. Um, and the Leslie, they built five of those. One of them was tinted a little green to be used in the part where they filmed on an iceberg because it was all white and they needed the car to stand out a little bit. So we actually have two of each of these cars. They used it for a... Um, an anniversary event where they had it on display. They had both cars on display for this, the, when they re-showed the film, and Tony Curtis was there, and it had been after Natalie Wood had already passed, and he signed the car, and he signed it with his name and Natalie's name. The most recent addition to the collection is also arguably the most famous car in the collection. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang arrived in June, coming from the Desert Collection at the Orlando Auto Museum in Florida. The car is one of six that were built for the 1968 movie starring Dick Van Dyke. The Chitty that we have here was part of the Deezer collection in Florida. Um, from what we know, it is the car that was used in the filming of the parts where Chitty was driving herself. Um, so it was not the main driving car in the movie, but it was used in part of the filming. And we're still learning. It's only been here a week, so we're still learning the behind the scenes of it. And you said that the people that come in and see this car in person, describe their reaction. Some are actually moved to tears. They are just, um, again, I think it brought such memories back for them. And again, we've heard many people say this sparked the love of cars for them as a child. Um, it was the first movie they can remember where the car was the main star and the main character of the film. And again, it just, amazed them so much as a child that that started their love of cars and we've had people say that they're coming here the minute they walk in they're like where's chitty they want to see chitty. and they will stand here in awe and just stare the stalls automotive collection is open to the public on tuesdays from 1 p.m to 4 p.m and the first saturday of each month from 11 a.m to 4 p.m there is no admission fee but donations are welcome for more information about upcoming events, you can call 586-749-1078 or visit stallsauto.com. In Chesterfield, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. Thanks, Joe. That definitely looks worth the drive. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.